Welcome back to the playoff preview series hosted, owned, and ran by Tony DiBiase. Damn. How you doing? Twist of events. Huge equity owner. Today, we are going to be previewing every game down to the centimeter of the divisional round of the NFL playoffs, starting with Houston and Baltimore. Houston and Baltimore is the first game on the slate. Saturday, 4.30 Eastern. Baltimore, your Ravens, hosting the Texans. Nine and a half point favorites at home. Total of 43 and a half. You didn't check the weather, did you? Of course I did. 29 degrees. 29 degrees. And? And a good time. It is a good time. a good fucking time. I (laughs) think it's going to be a good special guest, Jack Selleman over here. This man has a podcast with a Baltimore Raven, Mr. Uh, Marlon Humphrey, who's a big fan of BDG. Insert clip of him talking about BDG. Insert clip of me and Marlon both on the couch watching Saturday's game because he will not be participating. That's sad. What do, uh, let's let you lead this one, Jack. What's, what's this game going to look like? This game is going to look a lot like week one, in my opinion. And everyone is saying the Houston Texans are a different team. Well, the Baltimore Ravens are a different team as well. And the Baltimore Ravens match up extremely well with the Houston Texans, hence why they limited them in week one. Are the Texans better? Of course. Are the Ravens better? I also would say, of course. So I think the key to the game is the Ravens will keep Everyone underneath of them. That's been their defensive strategy all season long. That's Mike McDonald's patented defense. They'll dink and dunk down the field, but they will not beat you deep. And that's what Houston's been so successful with, especially in the Dome. You flip that rookie on the road. I understand he dominated in the first playoff game of his career, but this is kind of a different animal. So I think the Ravens limit the Houston scoring. And then the biggest question mark is honestly, like, can the Ravens offense get it done in the playoffs? I'm a Lamar super fan. I call him the baby goat. I think that he's going to get it done. But questions are fair. Even though his playoff performances have been over-scrutinized in his career, it's still fair. One and three has yet to put up, you know, 24-plus points in a playoff game. Got to do that this time, and I think he will. So I think the Ravens do end up winning this one fairly big, but it could be close late, and then they pull away in the fourth quarter. It could be big early, and then Houston comes back. But I think they'll cover the spread. Is the rest of the Ravens an issue? Is that a concern of yours? The fact that you've had more than a week off, you know, normally I feel like Harbaugh is good Mm -hmm. coming out of bye, but, you know, I don't want to bring up 2019, but I'm going to bring up 2019. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be a huge storyline. I feel like everyone yapping about whether or not the rest was the thing to do. I mean, I'm on your, like, I don't think there's any way I don't rest my guys there in this yeah. case. Oh, you're it, resting it's, it's ridiculous. 100%. They go through the entire season. It's like in I the want rain, the, right. you're, you're not risking yeah, that. Especially control. a team that's been injury prone, and you're not losing your quarterback for a silly, like, rest versus rust argument. Is the rust thing real? It is. Like, the Ravens historically, even out of preseason, they always dominate week one, but they look ugly in that first quarter. The Titans... Most people won't remember, but they actually weren't rusty. They got a three and out, and then we're driving straight down the field. Unfortunate, tips off Mark Andrews' hands, and that's football. It ended up in the Titans' hands, and then they got their doors blown off. So I'm not worried about the rest versus rust. You saw the Kelsey's talking about on their podcast. They were like, yeah, you take the break. You get two, three weeks off, which they got, and I would prefer the rest. But they could still be rusty. I think that's what people misconstrue. Like, they could still be rusty, but the rest was better. Yes. That you would trade it in for a little bit of rust. Absolutely. I will say, though, on 12 days rest or more, Ravens are 1-6 and six against the spread. Oof. So, not great. Oof. You also look at Lamar. I mean, you mentioned this 1-3 and three straight up and against the spread. 15-23 um, and 23 against the spread in terms of... Sorry. What am I writing here? I don't this. know what I'm writing here. Oh. He might be 15-23 as a home favorite. Yeah, that's what it is. Thank yeah. you. I don't know how you knew that wow. more than I did. I had that written down. Because I, I know generally. <laughs> we each nice. other up. Yeah. Like, like, and it, like when we get to the Super Bowl preview and you talk about, like, he's 19-1 and one against the NFC. So I know, like, where his faults are. He's great as yes. a dog. But as a favorite, he does struggle to cover. Especially Ra- against margins of this size. Yes. Of nine yeah. and a half. Yeah, the Ravens do not. This is, it's funny. Like, the Ravens fans love taking on the underdog role. And so being 10-point favorites, which we were in 19 also, gives them real PTSD because it's real. The Ravens play down to competition, and they play up. That's why Christmas night, they murked the Niners because they knew (laughs) that was the game of the year for them. They murked them. They murked them. Sam Sam Darnold (laughs) might have almost made a comeback. (laughs) Super traumatic for Tony. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Not a fun time. Do I think they cover? Like, that? I thought it was a lot of points. 
it was a good sign to me, though, to say, like, all right, Vegas and the market has finally agreed the Ravens are the best team in the AFC. They should dominate this game. Are they going to? And also, nine and a half is so many points. Like, they could be up 17, and then you backdoor, go for two, and boom, you're covered. Both games on Saturday are nine and a half points, right? Yep. It is nine and a half. It's wild. So the question is, who really is the bigger favorite, the Ravens or the Niners this week on Saturday? Mm -hmm. Because when I look at it personally, I feel like the delta in talent is far greater with Niners Packers than it is Ravens Texans. If I had to pick one dog to make an upset there, I'm probably going to go with the Texans. I I think I would too. So I just feel a little bit more, I mean, loves playing fucking lights out, but Stroud, I feel like any given Sunday can put on a performance that literally wills his team to, to victory. Like we saw last time, but I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. Is that true though? Like, is it because of how sexual Stroud's performances have been that we've like uh, sexualized him? Like the deep pass Jordan, definitely gets us. But gets Jordan us Love has horny. been yeah. way better than CJ Stroud. No, Not to mention, uh, CJ Stroud on the road has actually struggled this season. So I don't know. Like I, mean, I, I think we just need to give. This isn't Stroud disrespect. It's more like let's start considering Jordan Love the way he's playing. No, that's fair. I think another thing you brought up was the Baltimore. Like, they always play over the top, so they're always playing a cover two, cover four look where they have a two high safety. But I feel like they haven't really been playing. They played like the Niners. Niners normally are within, I would say, a 15-yard range of throws. They run a ton of yak plays. They run a ton of screens. Um, But I think that's the kind of game the Ravens want to get in with CJ and make him dump it low. But that's where, like, my problem comes in is, like, I don't think they do that. Because they attack the middle of the field so well, and they stretch that safety out, that they are the best team on crossers. They run the most digs, and they have the most post routes in the league. That all creates problems in cover two and cover four looks. What beats cover four? Corners and posts, right? So it's like, I think that could be a problem for the Baltimore defense if they keep running those same zones. Now, again, they could run a ton of man and come out with a completely different look, and that completely throws this entire argument out of the window. But I think it's... It's, it's a matchup where I think it's both of the offense and defense kind of counter each other, mm-hmm. and it's just literally who's going to make the plays. And that's where it's like – that's why I think just that big of a spread – So that sounds like you would take the spread then. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You would lay the points. Yeah, 100%. Like, I'm okay. 100% – No, no, you no, would take the points. I mean, yeah, take, take I, I, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. like I'm, I'm slamming Houston's – Gotcha. Nine and a half. Okay. Interesting. I will bring up this point. Mike McDonald, defensive coordinator for the Ravens. This is actually his third time facing C.J. Stroud. He was in a week one Michigan coach. He was the Michigan defensive coordinator. And while Strad Shroud's, you know, numbers might have looked good on paper because, you know, you play for Ohio State, they always look good. It was Ohio State's worst offensive performance. So, you know, can Mike McDonald scheme something up? Slow down CJ Stroud. The only team that did not did not allow a touchdown to Houston all year was the Ravens in week one. Look, that's, that's all Pat huh? Jets Jets didn't let up a touchdown. Uh, he didn't play. Well, he Sorry. played yeah, the first, he, he first was, little bit. Okay. But, uh, Whatever. Sure. Sure, 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 sure. Stroud completing a game, it's the only game okay, he did fair. not. Um, and it's a different Stroud. It's a better team. I'm with you. If they if they get vertical and beat the Ravens, yeah, they'll probably win the game. I don't, just based off the way the Ravens have played it all year, they won't let Nico beat them deep. If they do, they'll probably lose. Yeah. But they won't. That'll be the strategy. Yeah. And I think actually the fact that Tank's out, Noah Brown is out. Uh, they're so one-dimensional they're, right now, it feels yeah, like. Yeah, they're a little yeah. desperate. But it, it's so like one of those where it's like, you only got to stop this guy, but the guy keeps fucking beating everybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. one sure. of, like a star basketball I feel like player. I wouldn't even worry about Nico as much as I would worry about, like, the stupid, like, Schultz plays of, like, that touchdown he had last week where they literally doubled Nico going across the field. Schultz was left one-on-one with the safety coming down, and then he had to completely pivot and get up the, f- up the field to catch Schultz, who's pretty athletic yeah. himself. Like, he's yeah, not, not athletic. It's like them drawing up those plays, those are the problematic ones where I'm just like, it's not going to be Nico every time. It's going to be this bullshit, like, or Bevan uh, Jordan or whatever the fuck yeah. his name yeah, is. Yeah, Brevin yeah. Jordan, but, yeah. It's but like, that's the thing. The Ravens will not, the Brevin Jordans, at yeah. least all year, that won't happen to the Ravens. Yeah. What will happen, and this is where, you know, my favorite prop for that game is actually C.J. Stroud completions. What, when people look at the Ravens' top defense, they imagine it more like the Jets, where they'll just shut you down. Mm-hmm. The Ravens will welcome you to pick up four, five, four, five. And then when it gets to the red zone, 
That's when they shut it's you down. Six. And, and it's just, six. Here's the wall, and you're done here. And they kick field goals. And that's literally yeah. what happened in week one. Stroud doesn't turn the ball over, which makes him an incredible playoff quarterback. They move the ball all the way down, and then they kick like three or four field goals in the game. Yeah. And, you know, the I mean, the red zone defense is massive. And yeah. I don't know the stats on CJ, but I, I know for a fact Houston is not insanely efficient in the red zone. They struggled even against the fucking Panthers to score in the red zone. <laughs> so that explains the, the Panthers game was weird for them for sure. But yeah. I mean, they it was they outdoors. The yeah, that's, I'm and telling away. you that that's it's gonna be it's gonna be a factor. I'll give you the Achilles heel to the Ravens: how you beat them. You take those and then you run the ball. The Ravens mm-hmm. defense is susceptible to the run. You can pick up four, five, six yards. So Devin Singletary. Again. Are you willing to give oh. Devin Singletary twenty carries because that might be their path to victory? Mm. And then the biggest question is. <laughs> If you fall behind, are you going to be like, all right, we're going to still give Devin Singletary carries, or we're going to think we have Shroud, we can go vertical, turnovers start to happen. That's where it's an idea. Yeah, it's just, they it's a rolling effect. Yeah. Give, us, give us the mindset of the Ravens locker room right now. Mindset of the Ravens locker room, I've never seen this team more locked in, more focused. I think when we look back on whether it's this week, a Super Bowl run, AFC Championship, wherever the Ravens get to, 2019 will be the best thing that happened to that team. The level of focus, the process that they went through this week. On Saturday when they were technically off, we talked rest versus rust, Mm -hmm. they did a full walkthrough in the stadium where they messed around. They got in the whole, like, mindset of going to the game, dressing up. So they weren't off. They just weren't, you know, playing full speed. So uh, the Ravens are definitely confident. The mindset of the fans is is antsy because they're anxious. If the Ravens go down 7, 10, nothing, which could obviously happen, the stadium's going to get the worst thing you could have in sports, which is like that collective moan and that sign and the groaning. And if that happens, then Houston needs to put the put the pedal on the metal. Yeah, 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 put the pedal yeah. in the metal. Yeah. It, it felt, it felt weird, but there's yeah, 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 put the yeah, pedal yeah. to the metal yeah. and, and run away with it. But <laughs> yeah. they don't want to fall behind. I know that. So are you – what let's, side of the spread are you on? Yeah, let's, let's go down and let's take some sides. Let's take some totals. Nine and a half. Yeah. I mean, this is like the cuckiest answer ever. I, I, it's a no play for me. I think it's a good spread. Okay. Um, but if I – if gun to head, I would take the Ravens minus nine and a half. But by, by, I think it's a ten-point game. Go, what about Houston. you? You're Houston taking plus. You're going to take Houston in the points. Nick, you got a side? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Ravens with the points too. Okay. I'm, I'm going to – not that I'm actually playing this, but if I had to take a side, I think I would take the points with Stroud. I think he just can do enough to at least backdoor cover. I will say, though, I don't think this is the team that, like, Ravens could really drop to. I mean, we've seen them. <laughs> we could. We definitely I, could. I don't know. I mean, I, I, the one thing I like going for the Ravens is they've dominated a lot of teams, but some teams that they have dominated of recently have been the Niners and the Dolphins, which is probably a similar coaching uh What's the word I'm looking for? Coaching philosophy mm-hmm. as a Bobby Slowick. Yep. So that's one thing that I, that is an advantage I do think the Ravens have going for them. Um, any last thoughts on Ravens Texans? Yeah, I'll just say this. <laughs> Ravens Super Bowl. I'll say <laughs> this. <laughs> what? It's a game of football, so anything can happen. But let's You're fast forward. Shit. Let's fast forward to the Super Bowl. If the Ravens are in it, and we're all going through trends and like what we're looking at, their their sample size. The Ravens will have played you know 18, 19 games by then. Ravens have the best defense in the NFL, statistically. The Ravens have 30-plus points in eight of the last nine games. The Ravens have beaten 10 teams with a winning record, and they've beaten six playoff teams this year. That will look like, what are you looking about? back on it, Hold that on the Ravens happened. are the best team in the league. But they got to prove it in the playoffs. So, so you just that. want the title of best team? Yeah. No, Regardless. I'm just saying okay. Regular season you champ. should look at yeah. the Ravens Paper as the champs. best team. The sample size is there. If you have questions <laughs> about whether or not they are because of the playoffs, I get it, but I think – Looking back, we'll be like, Jack oh, Settlement really says good. he just wants regular season champs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to the second game of Saturday. The favorites to win the NFC, 49ers, host the Green Bay Packers, also 9.5 point favorites, total of 50.5. Shootout loading, potentially. So we had the Packers upset the Cowboys last week. I got to be honest, though. I would still be more nervous if we had to face the Cowboys. I understand that's not a possibility in this round. One doesn't play two, but I'm happy we're here. I'm happy we're playing the Packers. I don't think that they are a legitimate contender as well as Jordan Love has been playing and he's been playing really well. I just don't, I think that defense is on the verge of crumbling and I don't know how. Hey, we did say, who's a DC? Joe, Joe Barry. Barry. We did yeah. say he was due. We, we were talking shit about Joe Barry last week, and Jamie was like, but what if he just steps up and what does better? Yeah. yeah, what if he should? And he, he kind of was. But we nailed I, it. 
I think it was more of a Cowboys crumbling, a classic Mike McCarthy job, rather than the Packers being like, this is our year. Do you guys agree with that? What do you think um, the spread would be if the Cowboys are playing the Niners? Say they played in this round. In San Francisco. Like five and a half. I was yeah, literally six. thinking five and a half. Uh, I don't know, dude. It would be six. People like betting on the Cowboys. I yeah. think it might be. I think it would only be like four. They wouldn't put it at four because then everyone would bet the Niners. Dallas in a playoff game after what happened to them in San... You also have to remember what happened to them in San Fran. Like, people would have been like... I guess so. But that's almost why I think the spread would well, be what was it the shorter. first time? The first I feel like time. it wasn't that big. No, it wasn't. It was, it was like Niners three, I think. Yeah, I think really? it was three. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just curious. Let's, let's move back into the game here. Green Bay, San Fran. What do you think, Case? Hold that thought. Gut? It's tough for me because I like the Niners, but nine and a half is just so fucking many points. And this offense is just, ah, it's tough. It is It is a it's lot like, of points, but out of the 12 Niner wins this season, 11, 11 of them have come by double like, digits. Yeah. It's like, like when they, they pound hit, the they shit hit. Out of yeah. Yeah. yeah, they don't like win by I small amounts. I think the way I would, do, I, I want to take the, under on the total, and I would take probably the San Francisco side of it. Like I would really? Take, yeah. Because I just don't – like, 50 points is a fucking lot. It's a lot, but I, I think there will be a lot of back and forth. I mean, this Packers defense is terrible against the run. We mentioned this a, a little bit on the pod last week, um, the stats and how bad Packers have been these last two months and the lack of competition that they've even been playing. Now you're going up against Christian McCaffrey – Week of rest. I really think that Christian McCaffrey is going to be able to do whatever the fuck he wants. Total rushing yards at like 90. Underdog has it at 92 and a half. I'm going over there. Um, and on the flip side, I don't think I, – I think Packers will be able to find some success. You think? That, like, that's Through the air. A, that's where I have trouble with. You don't think they're going to put up like 20, 22 points or something like that? 23? You I think I think they have to. I think Jordan Love's going to be slinging it. I don't yeah. think they'll have the luxury of leaning on Aaron Jones, which they've been able to do no, since he's been back. That is Jones has been crazy good. Yeah. That's why I think there's going to be problems is because they're going to force Jordan Love to make all of the plays. Where Aaron Jones, the past four games, has had over 100 yards in each game, has taken over 20 carries. Well, it's the same predicament with like C.J. Stroud and Love. It's like if they get down a little bit and they're like, okay, he's magical. We're just going to lean on him to do everything here. That's, that's when problems start to fucking just stack up. Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. Do the Niners have an elite rush defense? Because I, I vaguely remember that's actually not the strong so point of their defense. Statistically, they don't. But I also think it's such low volume that teams run against the Niners because you just you don't have that luxury to like waste time and run against them. Yeah. So it kind of feels, I guess, like small sample size. And I also think similar to what you're saying with the Ravens, how they'll let you chunk him. It's like, I don't think the Niners are worried about Aaron Jones running for three, four yards. And, and you also have, it's such a young team. Like, yeah, the which average age is good. 23. Which could be good, right? Yeah, I mean, Ignorance I don't know. It's bliss. like, it's, it's hard for <laughs> me. Dumbass Jaden Reed. I, I, I will say, <laughs> I will say, as you joke about Joe Barry, look, if, if on Sunday we look back on Saturday and, like, the Niners scored 38 points, it wouldn't shock anyone. But... It's not like the Green Bay defense isn't talented, and I think that at least gives a little merit to say, all right, maybe they find something in you know the month of January, and they scheme it up, and they they play good D. Jair's back finally, and you know could they limit? I think the book should still be out on Brock Purdy if we're going to ask questions about Lamar Jackson in the playoffs. Like any any of these guys, yeah. what can they do in the playoffs? Do I trust Brock Purdy? Yeah. If Brock Purdy falls down ten nothing, like. Yeah, people will be antsy. You would be anxious. About yeah, definitely. That, right? So I think that, you know, if the Niners get ahead, it's exactly like the Ravens. Game over. They're going to run the crap out of the ball. They'll dominate them. Love will be under pressure. Bosa pins his ears back, picks, yeah. and, and turns. That's why, yeah. like, I'm looking at this. I'm like, like how you said, like, how, with how we sexualize CJ Stroud, like, mm. with doing that with love. Look how quick he fucking <laughs> sat up in his chair. We say sex once. Which it's. <laughs> It's tough because, like, we look at this Green Bay team, like, they could put up a performance like they did against the Giants and, like, score fucking 14 points yeah. in a tough matchup on the road against the best, te best team in the league, arguably, whatever. But it's, like, that is a matchup where it's, like, hard to lean on a new guy. And, like, I get how good love has been. But, like, he hasn't played the Niners. That's not a, like, yeah. he hasn't been playing up to that competition. The Cowboys shit the fucking bed. Like, I, that, they didn't have a good scheme. Yeah. They came out, they fucking... Let Romeo Dobbs be naked every single time on a dig route. Couldn't fucking guard it. That's not going to be the same script that happens. So when I was doing a little bit of a deeper dive into why the Cowboys defense shot the bed, 
what I found was that the Packers ran a lot of multiple tight end sets and the Cowboys went very light on their defense, which didn't lend them favorably. Niners on the flip side are a top five defense against the run and pass going up against multiple tight end sets. I don't know if Matt LaFleur plans to do that again. It's weird, but, though. It's not like Musgrave or Kraft had big games. Yeah, but I think no, it's just having bigger bodies on yeah. – bigger body bends on the it's field. It's more like when you're in a dime set, you add in a corner, right? And you have a corner then match up on a tight end, and that's why Aaron Jones could run the ball all fucking day. Or sense. why play action looks even better. Yeah, mm -hmm. it makes it – that corner's ready to get downhill, and then he's lost. Yeah, or it's a safety that comes in. Either right. way, he's playing so. in the box. He weighs 200 pounds compared to Musgrave's 240 pounds. It's not going to end well. So, again, I don't know what the floor's plan is, but I do know that Shanahan historically has a great track rec record against him. That coaching staff hasn't really changed since, like, 2020 with the Packers. Yeah. So, I think the Niners just have their number. I think eventually the gap just shows itself more and more as the game goes on. I'm going to lay nine and a half with the Niners. I like their team total over of 30. Not to say I don't like the team total. Not, not to say I also like the over because I do think Packers will – kind of find theirs. Jordan Love, I think, is very good. But I think the I think one false narrative is that Packers are becoming kind of a popular underdog. And it's because it's like, yeah, the Niners have all these cool things, but Packers have Jordan Love. And I think that's a lot to put on Jordan Love at this point. And I also don't I wouldn't say like Jordan Love is actually playing that much better than Brock Purdy if he is. All right, now that's a wild statement. Let's I mean Brock Purdy's been playing Jordan Love's been playing awesome, but that's just like so is Brock Purdy. I think yeah, we've, like the think, shininess of Brock Purdy is worn off, but he's still right. playing really well. Yes, and I, yeah. I think I think when you compare them and be like, oh, they're both playing really well, you're kind of wiping out the first half of Jordan Love too. Yep. Meanwhile, Brock Purdy has now put together like a full year of being really I good. I think it's because when you're looking at like those sort of matchups, you're looking at now. What has he done the past five games? Because that's the that's the game you're going to get. You're not going to get yeah. his first eight weeks right. of whatever I, the fuck I think that's bullshit fair. of him adjusting to real NFL speed. Um, you also have to look at, like, when you're comparing the quarterbacks, it's com two completely different systems where it's like Jordan I don't think it is, though. Like LaFleur and – I think LaFleur asks – I think both coaches ask their quarterbacks to do very similar things. In some, in, in some lights, yes, but I think San Francisco leans on their playmakers more. Like, and – because remember, they have two of the top three players in Yak this year where the Packers don't have one until 20. Right, and, and that's where it's like Jordan Love's getting the ball down the field more. He has a higher, I mean, like, a dot. Brock, no, it's no, like, he doesn't. Brock Purdy's like leading the league in air yards. Air, I, yeah, I mean, average yards and depth of target. I mean, I don't know what the numbers are behind it. I would assume Jordan Love's slinging the fucking rock. I, I think these quarterbacks are asked to do a lot of the same things. Purdy's number one in air yards. Jordan Love is number seven. Purdy has more passes of 20, 30, and 40 yards. Purdy's also got the better passer rating. Passer rating's tough when it's like... Was, sure, all those don't, the, don't take into a... F Sorry, yeah, go ahead. My only go point off, was is like no one's... <laughs> I'm not trying to compare these two quarterbacks to the next two I'm going to mention, but no one's being like Patrick Mahomes is such a bigger advantage than Josh Allen. Yeah, In the fair. same case where I don't think it's like Jordan Love is that big of an advantage over Brock Purdy, if yeah, any. I think it's as simple as the last time we watched Jordan Love, it was on national television against America's team, and he lit them up for 48 points. And yeah. the last time on national television... Brock Purdy threw four picks, right? So that, that's, fair. that's to your point. Like, in everyone's head, there is a gap. And what right. you're saying is, I, I would even say in recent form, there is a gap, but that gap's like this. Yeah, I mean, like, Jordan... Love over his last 10 games is like 24 touchdowns and a pick. Like, it's it's stupid what he's done. Yes. Jordan, Purdy's are still good, but it's actually not at that level. Uh, yeah, I think Jordan Love has the traits. He has, uh, once again, the sex appeal. And I think his ceiling is far higher than Brock Purdy. But... I also think being like love is such an advantage over Purdy. No. Maybe that's being like no, no. no, no. I'm sure I can't really think of an example, but like someone's such a better quarterback than Drew Brees because Drew Brees doesn't have a strong arm. Yeah, or I'm someone's not so one's better, better than, than the other. I'm saying they're just two completely different scheme fits. I think in the way they play, which makes Jordan Love look more like sexualized. Is what like I was kind of going back to. Um, I've got. Uh, what are we taking on the lines here? Yeah, I've got Niners minus nine and a half in the under. Uh, totals in the playoffs of 50 or more perform historically bad. And I really just think that the Niners are a really, really good team. And everyone hates to lay double digits in a playoff game, but literally back to last weekend. There were three blowouts. So yeah, we it, have yet it, to really get a close right? game. Right, like just because it's the playoffs doesn't mean that, you know, one team's going to try harder. You could make the claim that they're going to leave their starters in at the end 
for like one last try because it's the end of the season, but like they're likely down 25 points at that point. Right. So it doesn't matter to me. All right. All right. Tailing. You're tailing? I got Niners and the over. All right. So we're all going Niners. What could possibly go wrong there? <laughs> Let's move on to the first game of Sunday. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers heading to the Detroit Lions. Lions coming off a very emotional win. Good for them. I'm, I'm actually happy that Jared Goff won that game. I bet on the Rams, took him as a long shot. But, like, seeing Jared Goff and, and Dan Campbell have their moment, that was – I'm he, all here for he it. He deserved that. He, des- so he needed You're that. Detroit, Jared. However, <laughs> things are changing. I'm all in on the Bucks. Really? Six and a half Bro, point dogs. Oh, dude, I don't know. Total of 48 and a half. I feel like I, every time you, like, you go all in on an NFC South team, it backfires. The only time I've done it has been the Bucks. That's the only team you were in on the Bucks before the season. I, no, 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 no. But like, there are there, you have these little mini segments where you're like, I'm all in on the Panthers for next three weeks. That, <laughs> and you're back, yeah, yeah. Car, but I love <laughs> Bro, the Saints right now. It's easy to get in on the NFC South teams though, because it's like if they win two in a row, they are winning the division. I no, agree. no, no. He he means more as like, yo, Panthers are like seven point dogs. That's too much. And uh, then I'm all in on the Panthers that yeah. week. You just like, have like a, an unhealthy not, obsession with. Teams I've never for a week actually at a time. bought into an NFC South team outside the box. Like those those times, it's more like it's for spreads and stuff. It's yeah, for I spreads, it, yeah. right? The no, Bucks, you've, been, you've been on the Bucks for sure. Yes, the Bucks. I actually think are especially of recent have been a very legitimate good offense and Todd Bowles defense. It's not like. Good, but I think it's very boomer bust. Yeah, and I mean, because they have the, really happens, hit. They're built like uh, kind of like the Packers, where you have star power, and if they show up those days, like they're going to have that high ceiling as a defense in total. Um, that being said, it's Detroit for me. See, I think this. I think they're ready for this moment. What's the over under? If 48, 48 and a half. I'm slamming the over. Both slamming the over. Uh, yeah, both yeah. of these passing defenses are fucking horrendous, uh, and they run yeah. way too much cover too. Like it just like in this day and age, like you run like you gotta <laughs> have fucking. Economy. You gotta have fucking <laughs> playmakers to be running that coverage. What's uh? Nowadays. What's our what's our feeling, Evans? Last you so you you yeah, lost Mike everything Evans last week. Me eighteen. Well, I didn't lose everything. Just eighteen percent of my net worth on my okay. Evans, yeah. Which means so you lost twenty percent of everything. Eighty-two percent left to fire. Do I go back to the Mike Evans? The, well? Oh yeah, this, this is Evans. week is the yes. week if you're gonna do it. it. You sure. go on a post art strip, the fucking center, and and be wide open for six. All right, yards. then I'll trust you. Maybe I'll get back on the Mike Evans train. I am going to be on Detroit, though, and it's because I don't trust Todd Bowles. I know Todd Bowles is a good defensive coordinator. Dan Campbell's a psychopath, but <laughs> I'm going to go with Ben Johnson, and I'm going to go with Dan Campbell. Lay the six and a half. You can win that game 28-21, and you're still covering that spread, so I like Detroit. The problem I have with, I do think the Lions' offense is the best unit in this game. However, I think their defense is by far the weakest unit. They're like and I'm equally bad as their offense is good. Yes, yeah. I mean... It's tough. So, you know, you look at, like, their last four games, and if you just look at their box scores, like, okay, they've only let up, like, 20 points here, 23 points here. But in those... In last four games, they have had eight drives where the opponent has had a first down within the 20. So they get in the red zone. Eight drives. So you're saying elite red zone defense? Maybe. Maybe it is. But out of those eight drives, only nine points have been given up. That's crazy. That's crazy. And so the Lions have this turnover differential of plus seven, four. So I do not think this player is that good of a player that I'm going to give him this amount of credit. But Chauncey Gardner-Johnson came back, and he's clearly making an impact yeah. on the team. On top of that... I just don't know how sustainable Baker that is, Baker and the Bucks were not scoring in the red zone against Philly. And if you want to talk about a similar matchup, a leaky defense... All, all Philly had to do was tackle, and they just were letting up these insane gash plays. I think Detroit can tackle better than that. They'll still let up yardage, but I, I think it's more a credit to their elite red zone defense recently with the return of Gardner-Johnson. Maybe. And is I Baker – I don't know. Do you trust Baker to pick him apart in the red zone? I don't personally. That's why I'm on Detroit. I'm not there yet with Baker either. I, I mean, I, I feel like Baker's been playing really good ball for most of the year and mostly of recent, but – I mean, some of those turnovers that they've had, like one was a CD Lamb fumble through a pylon. You know, like yeah. it. I don't. I think this defense. I don't think anyone's giving them credit being good. I think they're bad. I think we can all acknowledge that. But I think they can actually be even worse than they already are. I and so I, I hear you. Regression to the mean. Right. I think they get regressed to hell by the Niners, and the Niners just punish them. May I mean, if that if that happens, You'd then then definitely. <laughs> but I here's the other thing. Like on the flip side. We know Todd Bowles blitzes, yeah. and that's all he fucking does. Like, everybody knows it's coming, and he ain't going to change it up. Jared Goff, historically, that's where he kind of turns back into a pumpkin. 
Where's he been this tone. year? I don't know the numbers. Only only because I feel like this against the Blitz. You mean like yeah. Jared Goff? Do you know he goes from like it's not as a sustain of su- substantial drop off as it has been in the past. But like everybody else, he does drop off. I think he goes from like maybe I want to say like tenth in EPA to like fifteenth. Okay. Did you watch the Dallas game? Yeah. Detroit. That's what it's gonna look like. Yeah. I just say that just because like in in other years where. Goff supporting cast might not have been there. It's like you're under pressure, and it's like it's on you to do stuff. Mm-hmm. But the weapons he has around him right now are so ludicrous. Like the number of guys that could actually fucking make plays. They're like a, a light version of the Niners in a sense. You know, having Amara, having Laporta, having Jamison Williams, even someone that you can get the ball out too quick and hopefully make explosive plays. And obviously Gibbs out of the backfield was a big contributor last game. Um, and David Montgomery, if you want to hand it off, whatever the fucking case may be. Where it's like I don't really feel like you need Goff. To win. He obviously has to play well to win a fucking playoff game, but he mm-hmm. doesn't need to play at some extraordinary level. And I'm yeah. with, with I don't Baker, think he even played that well against the Rams. I don't. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And it, 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 for me, it comes back to like Baker. I'm Baker feels like to me like the Jordan Love, CJ Stroud, where we're like we're going to put a ton of pressure on him to win the game. Baker feels like a leaky version of those two guys. Where I don't, I don't think the, I don't think he's going to be able to get it done. Yeah, I, I do see what you're. I, I think it's kind of like. Because they don't have a run game, they rely so much on, like, Baker just straight up dropping back and slinging it. Yeah. And it's kind of like if that – they almost build the run game off their pass game, which – Which, which kind of – I don't can, know. If, it can't work, yeah, though, because you think about, like, Brady, of, even right. in his time as Tampa, is like, they didn't have a run game. Their, right. their run game was dump offs to fucking Lenny and stuff like yeah. that. Where it can work, but, like, also it's Tom Brady. Yeah, the one note I was on Kyron under last game, Lions number two DVOA against the run. Goat. And I think this is one of those situations where – their pass defense is leaky, but if they're not going to have a run threat, they drop eight, yeah. then they can limit Baker a little right. bit more. Yeah. Rashad I, White's I, been awesome for, like, fantasy and stuff like that, but he's not really a great runner. Right, and he's not going to no. gash him. He's yeah. horrible running. His uh, net run yards is negative 114. Yeah, yeah it's not Worse surprising. Like, coming out of college, 80. he was, like, an athlete, not yeah, an actual blind. running back. The, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, his vision is fucking horrendous. Colorblind and I, everything. I kind of feel like the Lions' defense is similar to – what the Broncos was for that short stint of the season. I don't remember exactly when, but their, like, turnover differential mm-hmm. was so high. It's like this defense is not good, mm. but they're really getting, like, timely turnovers I'm here. That fooled me. Yeah. I, I bet on Even, them, like, the week that that stopped. Yeah, and I don't know if you remember this. The Steelers early on, when they were getting so many red zone turnovers, it was like everybody got in the red zone, everybody was able to drive down the field, but just, like, no one was putting up points for a minute. Yep. And I just I, – I don't trust this line's defense, and – I. I, don't, I think, like, upwards of seven, like six and a half. There's been sevens hung out would there. Would you I think take money line, much. or you think that you I, I think they're a very live dog. Okay. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be against taking their money line because like of how bad Jared this Goff defense is. If choked in a playoff game for the Detroit Lions, would that shock anyone? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I don't I think, think so. I think another factor that, like, nobody really thinks about is Baker has legs. Like, he moves. Like, he's an athletic. He can scoop. He's a dog. Where it's like... Playing Matt Stafford, you knew that was not a fucking threat. Cool. So you could just drop eight, and it wouldn't like it wouldn't burn you. Where if you drop eight, rush three, Baker can run for five mm-hmm. and five and five Next. again, and, <laughs> and that's and over and like, over. And he will do it. Like we've seen him do it in multiple games. So it's like that's you want, you another. Want TB? Yeah, I want TB. Woo! Like I think that's these something. These are the dog guys this <laughs> weekend. <laughs> yeah, <the> favorite. That's <laughs> so right. That's Maybe what I think he can. Um, yeah. yeah. I think that will help out and also in the run game, too, because you can free up um, some RPO reads. All right. Yeah. Let's get to the last game, and then I think we should throw in some uh, some UD picks at the end. Okay. Last game, probably the mo- most highly anticipated, Kansas City Chiefs going on the road. Patty Mahone's first road playoff game, some say, taking on the Buffalo Bills. Two-and-a-half-point dogs is Patrick Mahone's. Rarely do we see this happen. Mahone's as a dog. Total is around total is 45 and a half okay so honestly this is the game i'm least excited about i'm avoiding this game at all costs. why I'm betting anything like this is i feel like this is a homer take in some weird way i'm excited maybe get. maybe it's because like okay so obviously the niners it could for be me a hold, super non-sexy game yeah the for niners sure. for me hold the most stock in this weekend i think seeing lamar in a playoff game and stroud in a playoff game that to me has more of my interest than Mahomes yes. Allen. Yeah, it does. Because I, I think these are such like career defining moments for those two quarterbacks more than it is like Mahomes or Allen. To I be would honest. actually disagree. I think you if, think so? If Allen loses this game at home, right, every time he's gone there, 
Like, he would have one AFC championship. He was the Madden cover. I was in Buffalo last year, week one, week two. And the Buffalo faithful were not talking about winning a Super Bowl. They were talking about a dynasty. And now you're telling me if, no, I'm being serious. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. Believe now you. you're into multiple years in Allen's contract to not even be able to get to the conference championship and only do it once in like, you know, in, in the prime of your career. I think it would be serious. And then if he does it, now it opens a can of worms, right? Like, yeah. okay, now Allen could go on a run. He wins the Super Bowl. Now we look at him as sure. you know, one of the best in the That's league. fair. I think I just don't want either of these teams to really win. That's, so that's what so I was saying. Yeah, it yeah, feels yeah. like it's a person. Me too. Right. Like I, if both could lose. If you tie, do they just kick you both out? Right? They should. The with these guys. Yeah. Yeah. This, this feels like these uh, these two teams like should not be playing right now. Like I feel like we need to pit these two against the – Tampa Bay and Detroit, yeah, and allow Kansas City and Buffalo to kind of win their games, then move on and see yeah. them in the conference championship. Yeah, I don't. There's not that like other teams deserve to be here more than they should, but I think just the way they've been playing, it's like Kansas City offense has been so bad this year. It's like, why are you still here? <laughs> Buffalo right. obviously got here by like the skin of their teeth, and it's like I wish there were more teams like the Ravens, where it was like not only have they been playing really well, but like they they're just. Fresher and and I more you were in it this say year. It's not sexy because of the defenses and maybe limiting. Like when you think Mahomes Allen, you're thinking thirty thirty shootout. Who's yeah. got ball last? That's, yeah, like and that's that definitely not what it is. And yeah, I might not answer. What's the over under in that? 45, 45 and a half. That is Even that feels high. Insanely yeah. low for a Mahomes Allen. Yeah, match yeah. Right. And but to I be honest, if I I really like the under. Right, I would take the under if I yeah. had that one side of that. They're I mean, playing. I, they're playing in. Uh, yeah, I'll bring. I'll bring some weather analysis into this. Um, <laughs> well, the man of the year. It's. A, I mean, listen. I try to do my part over here. It, <laughs> it's. It's kind of like every Casey game. I feel like for the last six weeks, it's basically like twenty degrees, a little bit of wind, a little bit of cold. But like both teams are super, super used to playing in these conditions, so it's not really going to play a factor here. What's interesting with like Buffalo is, I kind of wonder when. Um, when they're down and they're, like, really in the, in a fight, you know, it's always been, like, the Josh Allen, you got to win this whole fucking thing for us. He's got more playmakers around him. Like, you wonder if they they lean a little bit more on James Cook, if, if they open it up, or Dalton Kincaid, things like that. Um, whereas it's not like Josh Allen needs to be Superman at all times. And on the flip side, it's like Mahomes just straight up hasn't been Superman at all. So it's like, do they run, as I was saying before, at the UD picks, like, this feels like another huge Pacheco game where they're going to yeah. give him 20, 22 Definitely. carries or whatever, and he's going to run fucking rampant with it. So this could literally actually be like a really boring game. I think so. It, it doesn't, in my mind, it's not that Allen Mahomes game that we yeah, want. Yeah, like shootout. Yeah, yeah I, I'm not expecting that. Um, Bills have suffered a lot of injuries in their last Pittsburgh game, pretty much all in the defense. I, like, want to say that matters, but also, like we've mentioned, the Chiefs' offense has felt so putrid that, like, maybe it, maybe it doesn't, you know? Rasul Douglas was practicing today, so that's good news for them. I do think the Chiefs' offense in the last two games, though, against the Dolphins and then their last full game against the Bengals, it feels like they've been playing at, like, a higher pace where they get to the line of scrimmage really fast and they just let Mahomes dissect and... They kind of, like, they, it was already condensed offense, but now they're really condensing it, yeah. where it's like, if you ain't Rice, Pacheco, or Kelsey, like, you ain't getting the ball. I also wonder if there's, like, a little bit of uh, Mahomes' mindset has shifted and been like, all right, I'm fully buying into Rice as the one now. It's not yeah. like Kelsey, and then, like, I hope everybody else plays well. It's like, all right, Rice is my guy now. It's like, Kelsey, I hope you fucking play well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fucking pass, Him dude. buying yeah. into Rashi Rice could, it could be, like, the difference of what we've seen over the last month or so. I agree. And then um, on the flip side, ever since Joe Brady has taken over the OC job with the Bills, they've been com- they have become a much more run-heavy team. So, again, that kind of goes in the narrative of this game could fall into the under, clock could be ticking. I kind of think that does help the Bills, though. The Chiefs' defense has been a lot better against the pass than it has the run. Kind of leads me to thinking that maybe the Bills, there's a potential they could just bully them on the ground, I think. Yeah, definitely. It's kind of weird, like uh – a bunch of players, a bunch of the older players, like you think about two guys in this game where like Diggs has played some of his worst ball of his career, I feel like over the last six weeks. Travis Kelsey, some of that over the last ha- second half of the year. And it's like, are these guys going to be difference makers or do they kind of like fade away? Because they're the guys that you'd always look to in these situations. Yeah. Jack, totally. who are we looking to? I'm rolling with the Chiefs and I'm going to give you some analysis that isn't like the rest of the lazy people out there. Mahomes is a dog. I think there's Eight, actually one and one as he, a dog. He's <laughs> nasty as a dog. He's also nasty as a favorite. He's also nasty in the snow and the wind and the sun. 
He's like 86 and 25 in his <laughs> career, and he's won more playoff games than anyone but Brady at home, and he's won multiple Super Bowls. So, Do you know how many playoff touchdown passes he has? I think it's like 30. 36. Like thir- yeah, 36. Tied with one other player. But the, the most important stat to me is, is the turnovers. That. That's what wins just playoff games, and mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes just does not turn the ball over, especially in the playoffs. He has turned over where he plays during the regular season, but he tones those down in the postseason. And at the end of the day, like, this Chiefs defense is elite. Like, very, very, very elite. And if you look at Buffalo's side of the ball, like we said, Stephon Diggs is not playing good football right now. So are they really going to run the ball with James Cook? The way they beat Dallas, I think, left a lasting impression in everyone's head. It's not going to be how they beat Kansas City. They won't win that way. Like, I'm not saying that won't be their strategy. Allen will have to do more, is what I'm saying. Okay. They will not run for 280 yards, and James Cook has three touchdowns, whatever it may be. So I like Kansas City in this one. I think Pat just he finds a way. He always – it's funny. Allen actually owns Mahomes in the regular season. But in the playoffs, it's been Mahomes every time, and I'm just going to roll with that. Eight, one, and one as a dog. It's good yeah. odds. What, what's the I, spread here? Two and a half favored Bills. Um it's funny that you bring that Cowboys game up because that's kind of the reason why I like the Bills <laughs> yeah. is because I kind of just feel like they can do that to the Chiefs. And I I think it is a close game. Obviously, the spread's only two and a half. But if there was one team that was going to blow out the other, I kind of feel like it's Bills blow out Chiefs, if that makes sense. So that's kind of why I lean there, if that makes sense. I, I'm fine with that. Kansas City is one of the top run defenses where that's – that's where it gets tough for me, but I'm definitely leaning Chiefs in this one. I'm taking the better. Yeah. To, to I respond to that, I, I'm with you. I see the path that you're visualizing for a blowout. Patrick Mahomes has literally never been blown out in his career. That's fair. Like, like, like once, I think he's lost by double digits in his career coming into this season. Jeez. It's just unlikely. Yeah. I, I know it's unlikely. So who do you but want? This is who do you want in a tight one? I'm going to go with Pat. And the Chiefs, because honestly, Spags has just been spectacular in the playoffs. Historically, put Allen under pressure, and who's going to gash him? Like if it's not Diggs, Davis is out. Do you trust Shakir? I know Knox and Kincaid are kind of like that dual threat, but I just I like Kansas City. And I, it's funny for the Ravens, I actually want to play Kansas City. Yeah, I wouldn't want to play Buffalo, but I think Kansas City gets it done. Come on, KC. Young everyone, I'm the only rider of the Bills here. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, we ball. Fuck it, we ball. All right, let's finish this episode by getting some UD picks up in here. Uh, let's go to that first game. I like CJ Stroud to have higher than 34 and a half pass attempts. Um, we talked a little bit about, you know, uh, the Baltimore Ravens should be able to have a very good offensive day. Texans are going to probably be playing from behind, so that leads to a lot of pass attempts. Ravens also let up the second most pass attempts in the league because they get really ahead and that's how you have to play catch up um it is a tall number cj stroud hasn't hit this in his last five games he did get 44 in week one though so he's done it before against the ravens and since or last week in wild card round every losing quarterback went over the past attempt total and i want to say i want to say it was by a margin of about seven pass attempts like they significantly went over so i think you yeah. get down in a Dak playoff game through like 54 yeah, passes right you get down in a playoff game you just say fuck it and chuck it <laughs> so i i think it's kind of mixed into the total a little bit but 35 for a team that's going to rely so heavily on their passing game and their quarterback like give me the give me the higher i think it makes sense like i said i would be on completions with that angle cuz mm-hmm. i think it's going to be a dink and dunk uh, my two plays for that game, I'm on Lamar total yards over. Playoffs turn on. There's no feature back for the Ravens right now. It's kind of this three-headed with Justice Gus and now Dalvin Cook. So I think <laughs> you got to run the rock with Lamar a little bit. Uh, Texans not great DVOA, DVOA defensively, although better second half of the year. And then I really like Nico Collins under receiving yards, 80 and a half. Dude, it's high. It's, it's just a, it's a ton of yards against a team that is – been the best defense all year long, and their strategy will be don't let Nico beat you. Could Nico have eight catches? Yeah, but he could still go under with that number because those those chunk plays are just what the Ravens are going to try and eliminate and go to the Dalton Schultzes of the world, like Gut said. Go. Yeah. Facts. Off the top of the dome, I actually – see, I had Nico Collins going over that line simply just because he had it week one. I understand there's no uh, tank Dell, but I think he can manipulate the middle of the field really well. Um, and take advantage of they're gonna they're gonna motion him a lot. 
They want to get him the ball. They're going to try to do different ways to get him the rock. And I think he can take one dig, one crosser to the Izzy. I mean, that's what he's been doing for the past three or four weeks. He's very he's much like Mike Evans. Yeah. In, in some lights, yeah. Um, but he's had two games <laughs> over 190 yards in the past four. And the other game was over 90 and his range of outcomes is very high. With that, yeah. Also, like, without Dell, his numbers have yeah, been yeah. incremental. So, I, like, I, it's not like I, I really don't have like a passion to one side, but if I were to take one side of that, I wanted the Nico over. Okay. Yeah. I mean, <coughs> I, I like the Lamar pick. I think I'd roll with what you told me before with Odell at 31 and a half. Have him at total yards. I could see them give him, giving him an end around, like a little rush yard action, give him five or six <laughs> extra yards. But Jamal brought up a really good point that Odell's played – Fantastic at home, averaging, I think, it's like 61 receiving yards. He's gone over this number every single time at home. And I do think there's definitely a version of the Ravens where you don't play a guy like Odell a ton in the regular season, early on in the season. Like, the playoffs are what you bring him in for, for this reason. So I think Odell will be a player in the 65 to 75% range, which is a lot higher than he's been on the field for um, the previous, you know, regular season-ish week. So 31 and a half yards, I'm, I'm on that. I like it too. All right. Niners Packers, I already mentioned Christian McCaffrey over 92 and a half rush yards, terrible defense. Also do like Brandon Ayuk to go over his total of 67 and a half. He catches a lot of deep passes. Packers very susceptible to deep passes, big plays. So I think Brandon Ayuk, I, I just see him breaking off a big one in this one. 67, I think is very doable for him. Coming off games of, he's coming off three games out of his last four of going over 110. So once again, uh, large range of outcomes, so I'll take those two guys over. Next, Jack stats: Debo Samuel has scored the first touchdown every Ooh. primetime game I've ever watched him play in, especially in the playoffs. So I like Debo to score a touchdown in this one. I like it. Is he uh, boosted on that? No, that's just a great. You can't boost Debo. Boosted off of our favorite app, first touchdown, whatever his odds are. Yeah, uh, I have Aaron Jones uh, under the sixteen and a half rush yard mark. Uh, not rush yard, rush attempt mark. Um, San Francisco is allowed five of the 21. This is including, like, obviously backups and stuff, too. Um, but they've allowed five of the 21 running backs they've faced to go over their rush attempt lines. Um, I think this is a great script for him to hit this under. I think they're going to need to lean on love like we talked about earlier. And I don't see a easy way for Aaron Jones to just keep getting those chunk plays like he did against Dallas where they're going to keep going back to him and back to him and back. Yep. Yeah. Um, I, th I think that's – a. A good call out in the sense that, like, the reason that all those backs hit unders obviously is because San Fran gets ahead so much. And I was like, I love Najee Harris's rushing attempt number last week. And I just, like, completely was like, ah, I don't care about the game script. And, like, game script was the first noticeable thing that happened in that game immediately. And I was like, Najee's fucking absolutely cooked, you know? Um, I will take Jordan Love two rushing attempts mm. higher. He has literally not gone lower than two rushing attempts in any 17 of the 17 regular season games. He did have only one against Dallas, which is very odd that it just lined up with what this week is, but you would not have lost money betting this under in any of the 17 weeks that you did. So you're up a case, lot of units if you bet it every week. Right. If worst case, you're pushing. Best case, you get over that mark. Um, so I'll just be, you know, the squeaky fourth wheel and hope I don't fall off. All right. Bucks, Lions, Baker Mayfield over 254 and a half pass yards. Already kind of mentioned this Lions defense. Not great through the air. Also, high total. Bucks could be playing from behind. Need to play catch up. Again, they are, I think they're OC Canales. I'm blanking on his first name, but he's really just letting Baker Mayfield cook. He's letting Bake Bake. You know, Baker's also hit this in four of his last five, going significantly over, coming off a game of like 336 against Philly. I think that Philly defense is pretty comparable. Pretty comparable to the Lions. I actually think the Lions are way worse. But either way, if you can do it against Philly, you can do it against the Lions. Give me Bake over. I like it. I'm going David Montgomery rival versus Rashad White rushing Ooh. yards. Lions second, Devo away in rushing. Seven-point favorites, game script. And as much as they like relying on Gibbs, you want to get the ball in his hands when it comes down to it, they're going to – feed David Montgomery. I know people cried about it week one. They cried about it week three and four. They cried about it. They'll continue crying about it because we're all going to pick the sexy gives, but Montgomery will get those touches. And Is I there like a spread on that? Uh, yeah, Montgomery's actually plus one and a half yards rushing. So, I like yeah, it. take the points. <laughs> take that one extra yard. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking the San Laporta over 39 and a half uh, receiving yards. Uh, I get he's banged up, but he still saw on his 40% of snaps, he still ran routes on 80% of the dropbacks. Uh, this Tampa Bay defense gives up 60 yards to tight ends uh, on a per-game basis. 
Laporta averages 52. But I think this line is just like a smidge too low. I'm going to take Laporta. I'm, go- I'm going back and cashing in on Jack's misfortunes from last week. I got Mike Evans. Mm. I think I would take the yards just because, like, Detroit's pass defense has been – they're allowing their bottom three in yards allowed to wide receivers, bottom three in uh, receptions allowed to ri- wide receivers, and I think bottom two in touchdowns. I actually like the touchdown prop because, like, Mike Evans, it's one of those things where they give you the boosted odds on touchdowns and a lot of times on sacks for elite sackers and touchdown scorers. We're like, Mike Evans is leading the league in receiving touchdowns with 13. So you're damn near scoring in 80% of your games, but they're giving you a 50-50 odd, but boosted. So it's mm-hmm. even more. So I think the value on a Mike Evans touchdown is like crazy to get him at 1.25. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay the money on that. I like it. Last game, let's finish it out. Chiefs at Buffalo. I feel like we're going to be on the same page here. The one I have down is Isaiah Pacheco. Checky baby. More than 15 rush attempts. Is that where you're kind of going with it? Yeah, I like I like the rush attempts and the rushing yardage, where it's like kind of how I felt with Najee last week. I don't have the concern about game script getting away from KC. So I love the rush attempts and and yards. Yeah, and they don't, they don't give the ball to anyone else in the backfield. No. I think Clyde will be playing in this one. Where Clyde played the last game, too. Did he? You wouldn't okay. know, but yeah, he did. Right. I literally didn't know. Exactly. Yeah. So, Isaiah Pacheco, higher than 15 rush mm-hmm. attempts. I like to be fake sharp sometimes and, like, play the opposite. Of you, the do well. you do well. You yeah, well. yeah, yeah. But I'm going to be public with you. Yes, you. Patrick Mahomes, higher rushing yards. Josh Allen to throw an interception. Every time Mahomes is in the playoff, he does his little waddle for 20 yards down the Always. middle of the field on third and 13, and it actually breaks souls. It breaks yeah. Hearts, it, it makes you tremble. We literally had this conversation last week. I remember we're right. like, oh, the yards high. It's like, he, he's going to break off a 27 And he did it to Miami. Right. Yeah. And he broke his helmet. It didn't stop him. And on the other side of the ball, like, I get it. Josh Allen's playing great ball. But once a game, he gets out there and he makes a play. And you're like, why did he just do that? Yeah. You and live and die with the crazy Josh Allen plays. And, and I think you could get 300 yards from him, but you – could also likely get an interception. So I'm going to just ride the chalk there and go with those two. Uh, right, bring finish, home gut. I'll finish off with James Cook over two and a half receptions. Um, they've allowed six of the last run, last seven running backs to go over their reception lines. Uh, not only that, he had five receptions in his best receiving day last time against the Chiefs. I think it's going to be a similar game script uh, like it was last time where they're going to try to get him involved somehow. And I think it'll be through the pass game is going to be the easiest way. There you have it. If you are new to Underdog, you can get onto the platform with our promo code BDGE and it will double whatever you put onto the platform for the first time depositing. You will also get a free square, I think, pretty much throughout. They'll probably be shooting out free squares, so turn your notifications on throughout all of playoff weekend. They'll be giving you .5 passing yardage lines every time a new game dials up, but you will get one immediately on your app if you sign up with the code BDGE, and they'll double whatever you put down. So 20 turns into 40, 50 into 100, 100 into 200. That is our playoff preview for the divisional round. We'll be bite. Next week for the conference championship, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new. Hit the button that looks like this. We're out here. Say it, Jack. Hey. Go Ravens. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> There's an end. You got to hang. You got to wrap it in.